Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about getting you ready to hit the road. Okay, we got assessments out of the way. Now you have two normal work weeks with your mentor. Never fear, I'm going to help you turn that frown upside down. Long gone are the days of having to share bunk space in the truck. Private hotel rooms are provided for each one of you. These two weeks go by very quickly. Think of it as having a personal trainer right there by your side with all the knowledge and answers ready to assist you. You will find that being a Walmart truck driver is very procedural or repetitive with minor differences at each location. This is not a bad thing as predictability reduces stress. It's one of the many things that make this such a great driving job. One of the most difficult topics for new Walmart drivers is the calculation of ETDs. But this is a big part of the magic behind the self-paced dispatch system I mentioned in the first video. Our drop and hook operation without appointment times allows you to control your schedule all week long. I'll show you the method and worksheet that I created to hopefully help you understand how this works. Remember, you're feeding this information into a computer via the tablet in the truck. The computer is dispatching you based on your accurate input. You should receive the next trip segment or load assignment prior to arriving at your last assigned location. Let's start out with some helpful rules. Number one, don't calculate your ETDs until you're ready to depart your current location. Number two, know how many hours remain on your 70 and when your 14 hour clock ends each day. Number three, calculate travel time at 50 miles per hour and round up to the nearest half hour. Number four, calculate all stops at one hour each, no matter if it's a drop and hook, a live load or unload, store, vendor, DC, center point recon, or a claims center. Number five, you can update your ETDs whenever necessary. Number six, accuracy is most important as you get closer to your final assigned location. Okay, here's the form I created to keep all my data straight through the day. The upper part of this is more of a record of what took place. When I write a number in this second column here, I usually put in the first column whether it's a, a trip number, a load number, a route number, an EDI reference, or a pickup number. I just write the initial there next to it. I'm going to farther down these asterisks here. If I have a maintenance breakdown, I usually write the start time and end time here and like a trailer number and what the problem with it was. I just use this as a, a record here of what took place. So if I'm ever questioned why I was on breakdown time, I can tell somebody what it was if asked. So down here, let's say it's my first day of the week. Punch in at 0800 on the tablet on the truck and that means at 2200 that is going to be when my 14 hour clock ends. I'm going to do a real real simple ETD here. It doesn't get any simpler than this. My gate time is 9 o'clock, so let's just say I got in there at 8 o'clock, put all my stuff in the truck, got my paperwork, got hooked to the trailer. Oh, let me, let me do one more thing here. My task, drive to in my first location, 3285, it's 124 miles, remember I said 50 miles per hour? You're rounding usually. 100 miles take you two hours. 24 will take you another half, so two and a half hours. And the next task will be a drop and hook. At, and then I just use the space to write Cedar Hill. That's a suburb of Dallas. An hour. An hour for all stops, whether it's a live unload live load, a drop and hook. I always use an hour. It may only take you 20 minutes 
or some people 15 minutes to swap out but you may want to have lunch so build a little extra time in there but so this is the only thing we've been dispatched on so far on this example so we're getting ready to leave the yard we punched in at eight o'clock we're getting ready to leave the yard remember do this math calculation right when you're getting ready to leave I'm just filling this in here. We haven't used any drive time because we're, we were on yard moves. And we have consumed, because if it's 9 o'clock, we're down to 69 hours under 70. Remember, this is the first load of the week. So, 69 hours, 11, and at 9 o'clock in the morning. It's going to take us two and a half hours to get there. That'll put us in there at 11.30. Add another hour. 12.30. So, we're saying we're going to be ready to depart at 12.30. Our 11 hour, we're going to take off two and a half. Eight and a half hours to drive. Now at 12.30 to 10 o'clock at night, you realize you still got nine and a half hours left in your work day. So, Eight and a half of driving is no problem. And a lot of times on the 70, don't really get really worried about how many hours there are on this until you're getting closer to the end of your work week. Within the last day or two, you better keep this pretty accurate so you don't overshoot. But take two and a half. I'm just going to take two off there. Well, that's three. No, that's two. Sorry. <laughs> I was thinking I started at 70. Um... And then another hour. So basically, what I'm going to enter in the computer is that I am going to be ready to go at 12.30 with eight and a half hours left to drive, 66 hours on my work week. That's what I'm going to enter in. Now remember, this is before I'm departing to head there. So when I get there, prior to getting there, I should have a new dispatch. And I'm going to pick that up. We'll tell you how that will look. But these are the numbers. That was my first ETD calculation. That one, that one, and that one. Okay, we're going to continue on here. So we're done with the drop and hook at Cedar Hill. We've got our next dispatch. We're going to drive to a vendor. It's only 11 miles away, but like I said, you always round up to a half an hour. We're going to drop and hook at in Lancaster. This chicken scratch is only for me to read, okay? <laughs> hour drop and hook. Even if it was a live load, we'd still be in an hour. Now, of course, going to a vendor, they've got a destination for us already. You don't just go to a vendor and sit there. You could have done it at the last store. So we're going to drive to uh, our Walmart Grocery DC, 6064. It is 48 miles away. And that's one hour. And you're going to drop and hook at Cleburne, suburb of Fort Worth. And an hour there. So let's see what this does to our times here. So... I'm going to change this here. So we got done a little bit early. 12.30 was our original ETD. But this is a note sheet here, or a notepad for figuring stuff out. So we're leaving at noon. We're going to get to 12.30. We should be leaving by 1.30. Get there by 2.30. Over to Cleburne, I should say. And then drop and hook there. And 15.30 is when we should be ready to go. Let's just take our existing eight and a half hours. Brings down to eight hours of drive time. We've got another hour here. Brings down to seven hours drive time. But I see a problem. 3.30 to 10 o'clock. That's only six and a half hours. So we don't have seven. We got 6.5. And just bringing our clock down here, 66. 
we didn't do it before we'll bring it down a half an hour here so we'll go down we'll take off an hour go to 65 like I said it's not too critical on that early in your work week 64 63 62 so when we're getting ready to leave Cedar Hill at noon I've already calculated out all the work that they've given us this this Cleburne destination is our last assigned location they want to know when they've got a dispatch for the new dispatch so we're gonna put in the computer when leaving Cedar Hill we're gonna put in there that we'll be ready to leave Cleburne at 3 30 in the afternoon with six and a half hours of driving time available in 62 on our work week so that's that step we'll come back and we'll do the next part of the trip here and show you how that works okay we're gonna press on here we're trying to roll along here we got our next dispatch uh, you know while we're sitting at Cleburne we're gonna drive to store 5080 it is 40 miles away that's rounded up to an hour drop and hook at Hearst one hour okay now let's just say we left at the time we said 1530 1630 we get there and we'd be ready to roll by 1730 and we'll take our 650 and knock off the hour of drive times for a 5.5 but from 530 to 10 it's only four and a half and we'll just knock these off an hour 61 and 60. so that would be your next etd that you would put in when you're leaving Lancaster, excuse me, yeah, take that back. When you're leaving Cleburne, your ETD at your next location, you're going to be ready to roll out. Your estimated time of departure from Hearst is going to be 5.30 with four and a half hours, 60 on your 70 there. And we'll pick it up with another segment here. Okay, we got one more vendor to a DC. Let's try to give it a shot here. Okay. From Hearst, we're going to drive to a vendor. Roughly 30 miles. We're going to give that a half an hour. I realize that we're supposed to average 50 miles per hour. This would be 60 miles per hour, but that's all right. It, it's, we always got a little margin in there. We're going to drop and hook at... We're going to put in there we need an hour to drop and hook. And then, like I said, we already know where we're going. We're going down to 7010. And that is 226 miles. We're going to round it up to four and a half hours. We're going to drop and hook at New Caney, which is outside of a... Uh, uh, northeast of Houston in one hour now you can say we only had four and a half hours so what are we gonna do here well here's how we're gonna finish out the day I'm gonna add my break in there of 10 hours so let's uh, let's just do this here so we're leaving Earth to 530 um, we'll be over at uh, 1800 we pull another 1900. I just keep going with the math. 19 plus 4 would be uh, 20, 23.30. Another hour is 24.30, which is actually 00.30, just after midnight. And then 10 hours later would be 10.30 in the morning. So. Let's look at our drive time. Um, this can always give a little bit of a nightmare of figuring this out, but our drive time, bring it down to four hours with that half hour off. And then this one here, you got to do a little thinking about how far you're going to make it. You got to think about truck stops, stores, or DCs that you can stop at. On this one here, I'd have to really put more thought into it, how far I can make it, but 
let's just say um, we're going to make it two hours into the trip. So we had four hours left. Um, you could do this differently. It depends where you want to stop for the night. Well, let's just say we're going to only get two hours of driving in. Um, so you'd be down to zero. Uh, remember, you're going to have 2.5 to do the next day. Okay, so what we've got here then, since you're leaving at 1900, two hours would be 2100. I got an extra zero in there. And if you go to bed at 2100, 10 hours later would be 0700. And driving the two and a half hours, 0930. Um, for your arrival time, and then an hour, you know, an hour for your uh, drop and hook. What I'm trying to say is it all works. It gets a little messy when you start crossing the midnight hour, and you got to figure it out, especially when you don't know where you're going to stop. But with that being said, if these hours were the same, you're 60, that's 59, 58. We'll take that 50 and add that on the minus 5, that's 53. 52. So, when you're getting ready to leave, uh, if I was right there, Hearst, at 5.30, you're going to put an ETD of 10.30 in the morning and uh, DC 70.10, and you're going to have, uh, oh, you were going to drive two and a half hours, so I forgot to take that off. So, 11 minus two and a half, that'd be 8.5 hours and 52 we don't subtract anything here just up there so here's your etd the final etd of the day depart 10 30 out of 70 10 eight and a half hours to drive 52 hours on your 70. okay we're just going to wrap it up here on finishing out this trip in one complete day we park somewhere between dallas and new caney we, uh, we get started at 0700 in the morning, 2100 is the end. Um, we still have to drive to 7010, it's 128 miles, just for an example. We made it, you know, our two hours that we stated, and that would be a two and a half hour travel time. Drop and hook at New Caney would be one hour. So, we're doing our calculation at 0700 in the morning. We got a clean 11 hours to drive, and we actually picked up an hour. We ended with 52, but we made better time. So, we've got 53 available for the week. So, let's just count it down. 0700 puts us in there at 930. Another hour to drop and hook puts us at 1030 in the morning. Two and a half hours off of 11. Needs a little eight and a half to drive for the day. Uh, let's take this uh, 50.5. If you want to get real exact, take off another hour. It's 49.5. And now you could send this as an update when you leave in the morning. Because if you got too much time built in your arrival time, if you're going to get there, well, okay, I'm saying we're going to arrive there roughly that's at the end of the driving we're going to be arriving at 9 30 well if you're going to get there at just say 8 in the morning and you got etd of 10 30 you're going to get there and not they're not going to have another load ready for you i mean they could but they may not you want to make sure that your times are relatively close so they'll dispatch you before you get there so you're ready to roll keep making money so I'm just letting you know that's kind of how it goes full circle. And once you get your next load, you will do your numbers again just prior to getting ready to pull out the gate. If you like this material or have any suggestions, please send an email or leave a message in the comments. As always, it would be great if you could click the like button and or subscribe. Until we meet again, don't feed the bears.